sets us up for a miracle by orchestrating perfect timing. It's up to us to open our eyes and believe. Gil Broussard has made a very bold prediction that Planet X's near uh, next flyby will be at Passover 2016. And he's actually calculated all of its you know, orbit and given all these dates. And uh, he's as, as deeply studied and researched in this area as anybody I know. So I just put that up there and time will tell if he's right. He bases this on an average orbit of about 300, 320 to 330 years per revolution of Planet X. And he predicts actually uh, very boldly that on the 23rd of March 2016, we will have a close flyby of Planet X. Not far away. So something is coming. There will probably be a scientific explanation for every disaster that will happen in the book of Revelation. And as it was in the days of Noe, so shall it be also in the days of the Son of Man. They did eat, they drank, they married wives, they were given in marriage until the day that Noe entered into the ark and the flood came and destroyed them all. Let's go to Noah's flood. I think you're going to be very surprised by this. You know, I, I believe all the fuel that we pump into the cars, it's a reminder of Noah's flood. Millions of dead organic material buried suddenly form fossil fuel. So for all the people who say, I don't believe the Bible, I don't believe it happened, you're pumping it into your car every day. It's amazing, isn't it? In Genesis chapter 7, in the 600th year of Noah's life, this is what people don't know, they thought it just rained for 40 days, it didn't. Number one, it says, God said, all the fountains of the great deep were broken up and the windows of heaven were open. It's an interesting phrase. It's not just that it rained. Something broke apart in the heavens and something broke apart in the earth's crust. And the waters prevail on the earth 150 days. Gives us a clue to something. And by the way, most things happen not once. Almost nothing in the Bible happens once. So everything that happens here is a prelude to something else. Only in Noah's flood, God promised Never going to flood the whole world in the same way. Yet everything usually happens twice. So these details here, they'll, they'll be handy in the end times. 150 days. Because guess what? Book of Revelation also says one of the trumpet judgments will last five months. Five months is five times 30 days, 150 days. Jewish calendar days are 30 days a month. Very interesting. There's parallels between Genesis and Revelation all the way through. The Bible is saying the flood was not mere rain for 40 days. It says the canopy of water that was ruptured from above. Remember the firmament separated the waters from the waters in Genesis? There was water above. And that was ruptured and then it all broke apart and fell down. The earth's crust was also ruptured from below. And 150 days later, the waters receded. Well, how is that possible? Well, if you map out planet X's orbit, it seems that planet X has an orbit that crosses the Earth's orbit twice in a period of 150 days. So you see point one is the sun, point two is the first crossing of the Earth, point three is the second crossing as it leaves the solar system. So here's a scenario that may explain Noah's flood. Planet X crosses the Earth's orbit and then each encounter brought debris and meteors upon the Earth. So here's the first flyby. On the second Passover, 3000 BC, remember Passover is the only feast where if you missed it, God gave you grace, you can celebrate it a second month, the month later. Well, Noah recorded that on the second Passover, 3000 BC or 5000 years ago, the waters broke from above the heavens. Well, a meteor shower would have done that. Meteors would have opened the floodgates of heaven, shattering the upper firmament that divided the waters from the waters. Then. Five months later, it makes a revolution around the sun, comes back, the earth happens to meet on this occasion. The debris of planet X once again as it exits the solar system and the earth's orbit. And so this is probably what happened. 150 days later, a second flyby of planet X drags a 110 mile wide asteroid into a collision course with earth. And there's a reason why we have quite an exact figure on the size of this asteroid or this meteor. But we have to say asteroid because it's so big. Here's a moment of impact. Um, a scientist calculated at a trajectory of 22, or an angle of 22 degrees. There's the moment of impact. It would have sent shock waves into the Earth's core and all throughout the Earth. That would have ejected some of the Earth's crust, leaving basins of wa for water to recede into, which today forms 
our oceans. Now, science always denies catastrophic events until catastrophic events happen. Did you know that last week an earthquake, 7.7 .7 earthquake in Pakistan, created an island like that? If you don't know, just go on the news and see it. They always say over millions and millions and millions of years, and yet on the news, turn it on, boom! An island just got created. In the same way, something suddenly happened and the waters then receded. Something scientific, something explainable had to have happened. A 110 mile uh, diameter meteor or asteroid would have impacted the Earth. Planet X gravitational electric influence would explain the start of Noah's flood, the canopy broke, the end of the flood, a meteor came and then ejected some of the crust which left basins. It would also explain the tilt of the Earth without which we wouldn't have seasons. So at the moment of impact, the Earth was pushed 23.5 degrees, which allows for seasons. I always believe in, in the beginning of the Earth. Now we got seasons, winter, summer, and all that. And it would have also cracked the Earth into tectonic plates. Does the Bible talk about this? Yes, it does. Isaiah 24, verse 19 and 20. Behold, the Lord makes the Earth empty and makes it waste, distorts its surface. The Earth is violently broken. The earth is split open, the earth is shaken exceedingly. The earth shall reel to and fro like a drunkard and totter like a hunt. That sounds like the earth's 23.5 degree tilt. Planet X could provide a scientific explanation for all these things we observe. The earth's crust is definitely cracked like an eggshell into tectonic plates. What we see on the globe is not exactly the plates. Underneath, they're all cracked. Now, one problem a scientist had with this was that if such a large impact had occurred, the amount of heat that would have been generated would have wiped out all life. That's just the physics of it. And so this person who didn't believe the Bible challenged this other scientist who believes the Bible and says, well, you got a heat problem. It's, it's just impossible that this happened 5,000 years ago. He says, well, how about this? What if the entire surface of the planet was covered in water? Isn't water a perfect conductor of heat? would have absorbed all the heat. In fact, I saw on the news today, uh, global warming scientists, because they're having a real hard time now explaining global warming, they're saying, oh well, the ocean is such a good conductor of heat. Global warming is happening. We are responsible, but the oceans have absorbed all the heat. The miracle was the perfect timing. He says, get in the ark, the meteor shower came. Planet X could have passed by. Maybe that's the gravitational force that pushed all these meteors in Noah's way. He got in the ark, he was safe, then it came. Then the big meteor that helped the waters to recede came at the moment where the entire earth was covered with water, absorbing most of the shock, most of the heat. Amazing? God is amazing. His miracles usually involve perfect timing. Now, the question remains, is there any evidence of such an impact? Well, I'm going to show you something that you will never forget. Most truths are staring at us in the face. It's right in front of our eyes, but we don't know it's there until somebody points it out to us. So I want to point it out to you, the evidence of this impact. It's called the Gulf of Mexico. This is a perfect circular crater uh, left by an impact of an asteroid. Does that look like a perfect circle to you? Pretty much for, for geography. Compare that to the Arizona crater, which is 0.7 mile wide. The Gulf of Mexico's crater is 1,100 miles wide. And we usually calculate that a meteor is 10% the size of the impact crater. That's why we have quite a good idea of how big this thing was that came at the end of Noah's flood, or in, as the waters receded. What's interesting is if we take pictures subterranean, sub uh, sub-ocean pictures, we also can see there's a visible landslide under the ocean. Can you see that at the top of the circle? The land slid into the ocean in the distant past. If this is ha has happened before, this area from Houston to Louisiana to New Orleans is a high-risk area of for collapse a second time if there was an un could be unstable. Also, you know that oil and gas are found in abundance in this area because plant life was buried suddenly by a previous landslide. So 70 to 80 percent of America's domestic oil and gas flows through the pipelines of this high-risk zone. Now the shock waves sent, uh, were sent around the world. Is there any evidence of that? Sure there is. It caused an uplift on the other side of the planet. It's called the Himalayan mountain range. Take a look at it. It's a perfect curve. It's the same curve as the Gulf of Mexico sent to the other side. In other words, Himalayans were formed in a matter of seconds. Number two, it also means the highest peaks of the Himalayas did not exist at the time of Noah's flood. So a lot of people like to argue and say, well, how much would it have to rain to reach all the way to the top of Mount Everest? Well, excuse me, there was no Mount Everest. Amazing. 
God has an answer to everything. And it's right there. It's staring you in the face. Next time you look at the globe, it's all there. But I'll take you even further. This is a NASA satellite map of gravity. Did you know that gravity is unevenly distributed on the Earth? You are slightly heavier in Asia. That's why we have to eat rice and not pasta. You're slightly heavier in Asia because the land density is greater. Well, what could have caused that? It indicates pressure wave. Powerful meteor impacting during a total global flood is a logical explanation for this anomaly on our planet. Let's talk about future implications because that's the part everyone wants to know. What does this matter to me? Revelation is a timeline. Revelation indicates that worse things will happen during the seven year tribulation. I think that's pretty scary, don't you think? So we don't want to be there for that. We want to believe Jesus now. We want to accept the Savior now. He's giving us warning through all of this prophecy and science. You don't want to be here for this. And there came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth. And unto them was given power, as the scorpions of the earth have power. And it was commanded them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth, neither any green thing, neither any tree, but only those men which have not the seal of God in their foreheads. And to them it was given that they should not kill them, but that they should be tormented five months. And their torment was as the torment of a scorpion when he striketh a man. And in those days shall men seek death and shall not find it, and shall desire to die, and death shall flee from them. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we, which are alive and remain, shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord.